So in this video, I have an update for you on the Juggernaut Tactical Rifle and some new information that we received from the company. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons violates our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to let you know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfpc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, a new product was created by Juggernaut Tactical, and it is a rifle with an extended lower receiver. We've talked about this product in the past on the channel, and the last announcement I made for you guys in the last video update I had for you guys was that Juggernaut actually stated that they will be selling these rifles starting at SHOT Show. They're going to start taking pre-orders, and then about in mid-February, they will actually be delivering these rifles to those who pre-order them. Now, for those of you who are not in California, you might see this rifle and think, what's the big deal? Well, if you look closer, the low receiver has an extension above the trigger. This extension drops down where the uppermost part of the trigger is exposed on the rifle. That is being done to try to actually not have this rifle fall within the definition of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. One of the features that can make a semi-automatic Senfire rifle with a detachable magazine, a so-called assault weapon, is a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. California's Code of Regulations sections 5471 subsection Z further defines that a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon means a grip that allows for a pistol style grasp in which the web of the trigger hand between the thumb and the index can be placed beneath or below the top of the exposed portion of the trigger while firing. So, I have here a statement that Juggernaut Tactical made on the new rifle that will be included on their website when they actually put these up for sale. So this is kind of Juggernaut Tactical's official statement on the legality of the rifle and how they actually came to the conclusion that they can legally sell this. So here is this statement. It says, let's talk pistol grips. Several jurisdictions across the country restrict the manufacture, sale, or possession of semi-automatic firearms equipped with pistol grips. Some states merely list pistol grip as a prohibited feature without further defining what pistol grip is. The old federal assault weapons ban was the same way. Had California left it at that, the substantial brain power of Juggernaut Tactical would have shifted its efforts to other projects. California, however, attempted to clarify pistol grip in their regulations. And as we read the definition for the umpteenth time, a little light bulb appeared above our collective head. What if we lowered the bottom of the receiver? We asked ourselves. Can it be that simple? With that, we started initial designs and simultaneously began discussions with our contacts in the firearms industry, law enforcement, and those pesky attorneys. After a deep dive into California's assault weapons laws and regulations, we feel we are on pretty solid ground. Were there naysayers, of course, and it wasn't necessarily that they disagreed with the concept or our interpretation of the regulations, but rather they didn't think the California Department of Justice would take too kindly to get another innovation that keeps semi-automatic semi-fire rifles, um, semi-automatic semi-fire firearms from being classified as so-called assault weapons. California Department of Justice became aware of what we intended to do in early December of 2021. We have yet to receive any phone calls, in-person contacts, or a cease and desist order from them. Then the document juggernaut goes on to point out what they believe are two syntax errors within the California definition of pistol grip and why their interpretation makes their new product legal. So here is the first syntax error. They state, the term a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of a weapon is used to classify certain firearms as assault weapons by generic characteristics in section 30515 of the penal code. The original definition of that term in late 1999 was consistent with legislative intent to describe a physical characteristic of the firearm. As that term was revised through the notice periods to address public concerns yet remain concise, the somewhat befuddling definition appeared to also address the manner in which the grip was held. Then they go on to say that that definition has not been clarified over the last 20 years and so has led to these two different types of interpretation. The first interpretation they say is, means a grip in which the web of the trigger hand can be placed beneath or below the top exposed part of the trigger while firearm and this is what Juggernaut Tactical subscribes to, this interpretation because it describes the location of the web of the trigger hand relative to the trigger as an attribute of the firearm's grip. They state that this is consistent with the usage in section 30515. It delineates the bottom of the action as well as the 
conspicuous protrusion of the pistol grip relative to that location. And it pairs well with the designs of many modern semi-automatic rifles, which utilize a pistol grip and have a trigger that protrudes from a slot in the bottom of the receiver. Now they say there is also a second kind of interpretation of the definition. It says a pistol style grasp in which the web of the trigger hand can be placed beneath or below the top of the exposed portion of the trigger while firing. They state the wording of this has caused many to believe that the location of the web of the trigger hand is a condition of the pistol style grasp. This interpretation is not consistent with the legislative intent in that it no longer characterizes a feature of the firearm, but rather the manner in which the shooter's grasp can be manipulated. Such an interpretation would mean that people with certain hand anomalies or medical conditions, um, things like rheumatoid arth arthritis, um, some sort of amputation, etc., would not be subject to having a pistol style grasp as an assault weapon feature because they are unable to actually grasp the grip in a manner described. They then move on to talking about the second syntax error. They state because DOJ rejects consideration of characteristics such as dexterity, the phrase can be placed, must specify the physical characteristic of the pistol grip itself. So again, they're talking about the true test is the physical characteristics of the grip itself, not kind of this subject term about where the placement of your hand is. They go on to state that using the terms designed and intended instead of can be placed in that regulation 5471 subsection Z would achieve clarity consistent with legislative intent. They then give an example of how they believe this definition should read. It states the pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon means a grip that is designed to allow for a pistol style grasp in which the web of the trigger hand between the thumb and the index finger is intended to be placed beneath or below the top of the exposed portion of the trigger while firing. And then they go on to say that the terms designed and intended are used in that same section when describing other things, like for example, when they're used to describe flash suppressors. They then go on to say that although there are a number of ways you could hold a firearm's pistol grip while firing where the web of the hand would actually fall below the exposed portion of the trigger, whether you're shooting a handgun, rifle, or shotgun, there is a proper way to grasp a pistol grip. They then actually give examples in this kind of press release of the military manuals that talk about the proper way to actually hold a um, firearm when you have a pistol grip and the proper way your grip is actually supposed to be. And it would actually be kind of this high grip. And the fact that you can slide your hand down doesn't mean that that's the way it's intended and designed to be held. And the way it's intended and designed to be held is with kind of that full choked up grip and that's the way you're actually supposed to shoot these firearms. And they're using that as a basis to say that's also why if you hold their firearm or their rifle in the proper way, the way it's designed and intended to be, therefore it would be legal. Then they conclude this press release by saying, and thus is created the Juggernaut Tactical F series. And after the conclusion of that fairly exhaustive analysis, that is what they have come to. So that's kind of the major basis of what they have actually come to in designing this product marketing it and now selling it. That is kind of what they determined to be the legal analysis and why they believe this rifle is legal. In my opinion, I still have some major concerns, especially when I read this, um, when you consider that a part of their analysis hinges on inserting language like designed to and intended to into the definition of a pistol style grasp or that regulation code. The concern being that yes, the definition would be clearer if that language is inserted in like they want it to be. Um, if you insert language into the regulatory definition, maybe it would be more clear in favor of Juggernaut Tactical and us California gun owners, but that language isn't actually there in that regulation. There is that language designed, can be intended to be all that, like they mentioned, is in other parts of that regulation, but it's not in that specific definition. So just simply saying that we would like to insert it in there doesn't actually give you the legal authority under that specific definition the way it currently exists. Also, they point to two different ways that the definition could be interpreted. One way is in their favor and in favor of their product, yet there is that other interpretation. And that to me is the inherent problem since I don't have much faith that the DOJ will interpret definitions in a way that favors California gun owners or favor these types of products. In fact, the second interpretation is more comprehensive in its language and includes more of the true definition. And therefore, I think the DOJ would just say, well, if you read this definition in a whole, instead of parsing out specific sections that maybe favor California gun owners more, then you would reach the conclusion that maybe this rifle is not legal. 
Now, one thing I do agree with them is that the definition of what a pistol grip should be should not be this uh, squishy, subjective, loose definition that is dependent on each and every person's physical characteristics. What is legal on a rifle should not be person specific because that ends up giving us a whole lot of zero guidance on what we should actually put on our rifles, what we shouldn't and what would actually get us arrested. If it's just this subjective, can be squishy, dependent on personal individual characteristics, really that means that the laws in California would vary person to person and that can't be the fact. However, although I think that's the way it shouldn't be, that doesn't mean that's not the way the DOJ would interpret this and approach this issue. So I'm definitely still on the fence after reading this press release. Um, I will still be dropping by the Juggernaut Tactical booth at SHOT Show to kind of check out the rifles, to get you guys more pictures, videos, and get more information for you all. But I just wanted to relay to you all what Juggernaut is saying with this kind of press release that they're gonna put out on their website with these rifles when they're doing those pre-orders. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of 2A information. Again, thank you to everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell. You guys are directly impacting this channel, impacting these videos and helping you to reach more people than I could have ever thought. So thank you guys again for all the support you've shown me. If you don't have a comment in mind, just comment down below, just comment to feel the algorithm. And also if you're a new subscriber, go ahead and comment down below that you're a new subscriber or if you're a long time lurker and you just finally decided to subscribe, comment down below that you're a new subscriber and I will make sure I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget to stay with Built Barm Scholars, stay with me and maintain Barm Scholars.